Uh, Robert, to, to many people, Rishi Sunak is one of those sort of individuals who is a, the ultimate globalist. He will have houses in countries all over the world. His wife with her non-dom status would at some point have had to agree that they will not live out their years in this country. How would he assuage fears that what he is prioritising are globalist interests and not those of the British public? Well, look, I think that's, with all due respect, com complete rubbish. Um, yes, I think Rishi Sunak uh, would be a very capable representative and ambassador for the UK on the international stage. He's very adept at that. You've seen that in the, the various interventions he's done with finance ministers and so on around the world. He, he is someone who's lived and worked in the United States, who's married to somebody uh, who he met in the US, who's of Indian origin. All of that, you know, I think is, is, is wholly positive and good for the country that we'd have a prime minister who's capable of being a major figure on the international stage and has a global perspective. But at, the, at his heart, Rishi Sunak is a traditional Tory. The things that impressed me when we were first elected together were the fact that he was someone who really understand business and free markets, uh, who wanted to cut taxes and create a smaller, more nimble state, who thought very deeply about how the economy can change and adapt in the years ahead, using his experience as an investor and uh, knowledgeable about technology. All of those things will be really beneficial for the country if he were to become our Prime Minister. But, you know, whether he is somebody who has made money in business or is married to somebody whose dad did, I don't think that's very conservative if we start to say that that's a disqualification for high office. I mean, for goodness that sake. Not my point, Robert. Is that, is not my point. that is not my point. That is not my point. And I absolutely respect your right to say that what I'm saying is absolute rubbish. But what I'm saying is with the things that you're describing in terms of pushing forward technology, in terms of pushing forward a central digitalized banking currency, which is his thing, that's what he's into. We need to have the public reassured that the, uh, the implications of that, the effects of that, will be positive for Great Britain and not just necessarily for the world. I don't care how many billions he has. If he's worked hard for it, good on him. But my point is that does he have our best interests at heart with all of the things that you've just named, which are a particular interest to him? Well, one of the big challenges we've got is how do we grow the economy? We've had 10 years or more of low growth under multiple prime ministers and chancellors. How are we actually going to get this country fired up again? And to have a prime minister who understands the economy, who's founded successful businesses, who's invested in startups and technology businesses, seems to me to be a really good thing for the future of the country. But if, if your question is, do you think that Rishi Sunak can understand, empathise with and support hard-working people, which I think is an important and valid question of any of the candidates, because at the end of the day, that's what we really need as a prime minister in a cost of living crisis. I would just say, look at what he did during the pandemic. And there he stepped in overnight. He understood how challenging this might be for people. And he created the furlough scheme and the other schemes to support small businesses. I'm not sure everyone would have done that on that scale or in such a nimble manner as he managed to do. And that supported millions of people's livelihoods and millions of small businesses. So judge a man or a woman on their record. And Rishi's record in that regard is very strong.